So this one's been a little while coming guys, the Battle Station Breakdown. In this video I wanted to sort of give you a rundown of pretty much all the stuff that I use from a tech perspective as a data science specialist at IBM. Now I'm going to cover a whole bunch of the stuff that I use for YouTubing and making videos as well as the more hardcore technical hardware that I'm actually using to build stuff that you're seeing on the channel. Hopefully you enjoy this one. Let's uh, jump right into it. Alrighty, so first things first, we're gonna start with a breakdown of the desk. So let's jump through here. Boom. Check out my sick grandpa shoes. So this is the desk. Now, this desk has actually been a work in progress. So I actually started out with just the MacBook Pro, which is actually from work. And over time, I actually built all this stuff up as part of doing YouTube and as part of doing way more technical content. So it's taken a little while to get to here, but quite possibly the most important part out of all of this and what's driving the YouTube channel is this bad boy over here. So this is the deep learning rig that powers the majority of the tutorials on the channel. So I've just taken the glass off to give you a better view of this bad boy over here. So this is actually running an AMD Ryzen 7 processor. I can't remember the exact specs, but the most important bit is the GPU in there. So that is actually a Gigabyte 2070 Super, which is pretty much more than enough to do most deep learning projects. I mean, it's served me for quite some time and it's actually done really, really well in terms of handling most deep learning projects that I've actually come across. So this has been an absolute game changer when it comes to building up and, and creating stuff from a deep learning and machine learning point of view. So that's the deep learning rig. Let's talk about how we visualize all of this. So over at the desk, I actually have two Samsung 32 inch curved monitors. Now you're probably thinking this is a little bit of overkill, but it, they actually work really, really well, particularly when you're presenting or you're coding or you're writing tutorials. These have actually been an absolute game changer. I can't remember the exact model spec. I'll actually list it in the description below, but I've actually got these two on collapsible arms or adjustable monitor arms. So there's one there. There's also one there. So they're actually pretty good when it comes to coding. Now, during COVID and lockdown, I actually found myself doing a ton of presentations. Hence why I actually got these two little webcam monitors that you can see there, or the two little webcams. So these are actually Logitech stream cams. You can probably see them a little bit better right now. And they've actually been really, really good when it comes to actually presenting and doing a whole bunch of stuff. Now, when it actually comes to recording, this is where the Elgato Stream Deck comes in. So if we actually take a look, there it is. So the cool thing about the Elgato Stream Deck, let me actually just stop recording and turn off the lights, is that I can actually control a ton of stuff through this one little deck when I'm actually recording or presenting or doing a whole bunch of stuff. So right now, over here, I've got two lights which are actually hooked up to those. So those are, I think, Elgato key lights and the whole thing just sort of works pretty well together. So let's say, for example, I actually start out from my stream deck. The first thing that I do whenever I'm recording a new YouTube tutorial is I'll turn on the lights and I can actually hit that button and you can see that they're now turned on. And then the second thing that I'll typically go and do is actually start recording. So I've actually got this record button configured here. So all I need to do is hit record and through OBS, I'm actually gonna be recording. So you can see that there once it goes into focus. Now again, if I wanted to, I can actually stop recording relatively quickly. Boom. And now I'm no longer recording over there. So this makes life pretty easy when it comes to actually going and recording new stuff and doing whatever it is that I need to. Now, this brings us to the next biggie. 
the green screen. So this is actually an Elgato collapsible green screen. And whenever you see me doing tutorials or a whole bunch of other stuff with the background removed, it's driven by this bad boy. Now, given I live in an apartment, this is actually super useful because it's collapsible. So I can actually just drop this down and bring it back up whenever I need to. Now, over here, I sort of talked a little bit about OBS and you can see me popping up in the background. I've actually got a Kia, which is what you actually use to remove the background from your frame. So that's a combination of the green screen and the Kia inside of OBS, which is the software that I actually use to record tutorials to be able to remove the background. Now, I skimmed over it briefly, but we have these two lights. Lighting is obviously super important when it comes to actually making tutorials and making things actually look good. So roughly six months ago, I got these two lights. So these are Elgato key lights. Now they're not the cheapest in terms of what's actually out there on the market, but they are very, very good. So when I record tutorials, I actually take that blind up there and I bring it down and I leave these two key lights on. So that key light and that key light are the two main lines that I actually use when recording different types of videos. So I can actually turn these on and off. I think I probably showed you this already, but I can actually turn these off with the Stream Deck, which makes life super easy. Now this brings us to the next light. This bad boy over here. So this is actually a massive softbox. So let me move around. So this over here is an Aperture Amran 100D and it's a softbox that I use whenever I'm recording talking head videos or face-based videos. So you'll typically see this turned on in the background. Now, right now it's turned on, but it's only at 6%. So it doesn't look all that bright. Now you can turn this up and just hit that button. So right now it's at 40, 60, 80, and 100 and if we actually jump back on over you can see it's super bright so that light will typically be somewhere over there and i'll sit around here and that's what will allow me to record a video and get youtube in now on to sound so you've probably watched a bunch of youtube videos before and the tutorial content in and of itself is absolutely amazing, but the sound quality sucks. I'm, I'm hoping the sound on this video isn't too bad. Otherwise, I'm going to look like a bit of a nugget. But because of COVID, I actually found myself recording and doing quite a fair bit of WebExing from home. This is where this bad boy came in handy. This is actually a Shure SM7B, and I've got it on a blue boom arm. So... The amazing thing about this particular mic is that you get absolutely brilliant audio quality. It does need to be powered. So over here, I've got the Go XLR. So this is absolutely brilliant when it comes to working with different types of audio. Now, I also screw around with this quite a fair bit. So I'm just gonna open up the Go XLR app on my computer. So you can see it there. Check this out. I literally spend so much time doing this because I don't know, I find it amazing. I can hit this button and it bumps up and down. How sick is that? You can hit all these, oh, this one doesn't go up. Cool, right? And there's a whole bunch of effects. And whenever I'm streaming or playing games with my mates, that obviously comes quite in handy. So the way that this all works is that I'll typically turn the volume up here. I'll actually grab the mic and bring it over to myself. So it'll sort of look like that. And then that is actually being recorded through OBS over there. So you can actually see it picking up the audio in real time. So that allows me to capture a whole bunch of audio. Now, a couple more things. So I've also got an iPad here. Now this is the iPad, I think it's the 12 point something inch, I can't actually remember. But the main reason that I use this particular iPad is to record the breakdown board. So welcome on down to the breakdown board. So if you've seen the breakdown board on the channel before, it's actually all recorded through this. And I've got an 
Elgato cam link somewhere. So this actually plugs in, is that gonna focus? That cam link actually plugs into the computer. The, I've got an adapter which goes into the iPad and then I'm able to draw again through OBS. So let me just close this down. So it all records through OBS. OBS sort of controls all of this good stuff. Now the desk, I don't know if anyone wants to know anything about the desk, but that's just an Ikea special random tabletop that I found somewhere that actually allows me to do a whole bunch of stuff. Now, peripherals. So the first thing that I've got is the Logitech MX keys. So this is quite possibly one of my favorite keyboards that I've ever used. It's just really, really useful. And if you've got multiple devices, the cool thing is that you can actually switch between them just by hitting one, two, and three. So I was previously using that MacBook for work quite a fair bit which meant that I could actually hook up this keyboard to that MacBook and it would allow me to use the keyboard for the MacBook without having to unplug stuff and plug stuff back in. Now, I've also got the matching mouse, which tends to come in handy from a whole aesthetic perspective. I mean, it just looks good, guys. Look at that. Bow. Yeah, so uh, we're out about this uh, mouse. So this is, I don't know if you can see that, it is a MX Master 3. So this is actually a great mouse as well. The thing that I like about this, particularly when it comes with working on a, on a Windows machine, is that you can actually switch desktops just by hitting this button over here. So there's this sort of little tab over there, this thing here. That actually allows you to switch between desktops. So if I wanted to switch, I can actually just go from my command prompt go to the Go XLR app. It just makes life really, really easy when it comes to actually building stuff, switching screens, and working on a Windows machine, which I know isn't everyone's cup of tea, but it is mine and it uh, works reasonably well. Okay, so I think that's the majority of the desks done. So we've taken a look at the iPad, we've taken a look at some of the random stuff that I've got on the desk. Oh, I've also got a Mac trackpad. So whenever I'm doing zooms, as in like I'm zooming into different screens or not. So let's actually bring this up. So let's say, for example, I get Colab up. I'm trying to type as I'm recording, it's always fun. It's not set on the right device, Colab. So the battery died as I was recording that last little bit. All right, so we're back onto Colab and taking a look at what the trackpad does. Let's take a look. All right, so the trackpad. So let's say, for example, I've got Colab open and this is just way too bright. This bad boy is casting way too much glare at the moment. Let's turn that off. All right, much better. So we can actually see what we're doing. So let's say, for example, I've got the Stormzy generator up at the moment. And the nice thing about the trackpad is it just makes it easier to zoom on specific components. So let's say, for example, I wanted to show the audience how to focus on importing TensorFlow. That obviously makes it a lot easier to zoom. So all I need to do in order to zoom is just really just use the regular touch um, component. So there's actually this GitHub library called, I think it's Mac Precision Touchpad that actually allows you to leverage the trackpad on your Windows machine to do the cool precision swipe. So I think you can swipe side to side, close stuff and all of that good gesture based components. Alrighty, so I think that's pretty much the entire desk now done. So we've taken a look at the deep learning rig, the sound, lighting, all of the stuff that's on the desk. Let's take a look at some notebooks. Alrighty, so I've got my two main notebooks set up over here. So I have the work MacBook and then I've got my personal MacBook over here. Now you're probably thinking, Nick, you've got this amazing desk over here. Why are the notebooks here? Well, I don't know why, but I find that I'm just way more productive when it comes to doing video editing by having the notebooks over here. It's sort of like causes a bit of a mental break or a mental switch, which allows me to sort of just get back into the zone and focus. So this over here is actually a 15 inch 2017 MacBook Pro, which has served me for quite some time. It's due for replacement soon. I've got my little breathe tab on there to remind myself to chill out when I do need to. So um, that's always useful. Now over here, I've actually got my beast of a MacBook. So this is the brand new 2022 MacBook M1 Max. I think that's the term, M1 Max, yeah.
and that is purely used for editing video. So over here, you can actually see the video that I'm editing right now. Now, this is purely a video editing machine. I don't really use it for too much coding, but I found that just editing on Final Cut Pro is way easier than any other sort of video editing program. So hence why I've got this bad boy still rocking around. Uh, and this is only just a recent purchase. I only just got this this year because I was noticing that it was starting to take a little bit longer to edit those monster tutorials that I've been putting out. Now, over here, I've also got another little camera and this is my vlog camera. So this is a Sony ZV-E10 with a Rode video mic micro, I think something like that. But it is just a really useful camera and because I've been wanting to do a lot more vlogging lately, this little bad boy has come quite in handy, hence why I've got that. Now the camera that I'm recording on as we speak is actually a Sony 7C. So I don't know, I'm gonna have to try to work out how to get some B-roll of that considering I'm recording this entire video on it. But uh, I'll try to get you some of that. So that in a nutshell is all of the tech. So we've got the desk over there and we've got the MacBooks. That's pretty much all I rock with. Um, I do know that a replacement for this is coming soon. So I don't know, maybe we'll do an unboxing video of that if you guys wanna see it. But for now, that's uh, the Battle Station Breakdown now done. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell. And let me know if you enjoyed the more vloggy style videos where I just talk about a bunch of random stuff like tech and hardware, motivation, habits, and all that good stuff. Hopefully you're enjoying these videos. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. Uh, peace.